Hello everyone! Sudamar is the final zone that we need to cover for Legion, and it's only available for when you reach max level. A lot of you have asked me if I could cover the story of the zone, which I am going to do today, but do keep in mind that I haven't finished the entire questing experience. Part of the reason is that some of the quests bugged out, but there are also a few quests that haven't unlocked yet. I do believe that I can give you a general overview of the storyline, and since so many people have requested if I could just explain a little bit of the story that's going on, I simply couldn't say no. Tomorrow I'll upload the full playthrough for those that want to see more of the details that the zone has to offer. Right, with that introduction out of the way, let's talk about the story of Suramar so far. After going through the different zones that the Broken House has to offer, at max level Suramar awaits. Our mission is to collect a pillar of creation, in this case the Eye of Amonful. Yet Gul'dan and the Legion, they've beaten us to it, and they've convinced Grand Magistrix Alessandra to join them. In the past, during the days that Azara still ruled the Night Elves, Alessandra witnessed how her queen chose to follow a very dark path by trying to summon Sargeras and the Legion into the world. Back then, Alessandra did everything in her power to protect her people from the evil of the Legion, as they harnessed the power of the Eye of Amonful, they created a source of power called the Nightwell, and they used that power to protect Sudomar from the Sundering that followed after the War of the Ancients. For 10,000 years, Elisan and her people were shielded from the world, and for millennia, they relished in the powers of their Nightwell. Now very similar to the High Elf Blood Elf story arc, they too became dependent on their well. They needed their source of magic, and for these Night Elves, now called the Nightborn, being exiled from the city and their source of power was the highest punishment possible. When a Nightborn is cut off from the well, they'll start to devolve. First, they'll turn into a Nightfallen, and they'll desperately have to find any source of magic to feed upon. We've seen this happen in Azuna with Runas the Shamed, yet Runas, he was unable to feed enough, and he devolved even further into something that they call a Withered. Once a Nightborn reaches that stage, they lose any hope of ever turning back. They lose their very identity, as they become nothing more but mindless monsters feeding on any source of of magic they can. So as you can imagine, going against the leaders of Sudamar is a risky business, and not many of the Nightborn were willing to risk it all to speak out against Alessandra when she decided to join the Legion. That doesn't mean that all of the Nightborn are just going to go with the flow, and that's where we come in. Nobody touch it. Not until our guest arrives. There is much to be done. Thank you for coming, Noble. Without you, Azeroth will surely fall. For the last 10,000 years, the elven city of Sudamar has been sealed in an arcane barrier. Much like the other ones was. The barriers come down. Since then, waves of magical energy have been emanating from the city like ripples in a pond. It was in these waves that I sensed a pattern. A spell encrypted amongst chaos. I have recreated the spell here. It's not dangerous, but beyond that, I have no idea what it does. Farewell, my friend. Any disturbance should catalyze the sequence. Just, uh, give it a poke or something. Poke. Ethel Kanesh. Hello. I am Thalysra of the Shaldurai, the Nightborn. First Arcanist in the court of Suramar. My people have made a dire pact. One that spells doom for this world. Time is short. If you have found this message, you are capable of finding me as well. Make haste for Suramar. You may be our last hope. A magical message in a bottle is sent by Talisra, and we're told to travel to Sudamar and find her. But we're using Katgar's wand in order to find the lady that sent the distress call. We're trying to find out what the hell happened to her. Make haste for Suramar. You may be our last hope. Ithnala Kanesh. Nobi one Kenobi. I hope someone out there is listening. <laughs> Need to keep moving. Okay, not a ruin. Wrath! Withered. I must be getting close. Ooh. Alright. Wrath Domas! Sure. Wrath Domas to you as well. Lead the way, Talisra. Stand down, Erasmus. Can you not see that Elisand has forsaken us? Anna! Sick. That will buy me some time. Hmm. Hello? Do, do you want to come out of your bubble? 
come out of here. Ow, you don't have to scream. A time stop spell. She will pay for that. This is not your business, Outlander. The Lystra has betrayed the Grand Magistrix and must be put down. Sick. Love the voice acting. Witness the power of the Nightborn. Who are you? An outlander, you receive my message? Be careful who you trust. I have much to tell you, but it is not safe to speak here. I cannot hold this barrier forever. Talisra lifts a delicate floss to her lips. Her eyes shimmer as she takes a sip. If you push through, we may find shelter up ahead. We are only as strong as a- Rap Anutanos! We must take care. The Withered Ones prowl this area, ravenous in their hunger for magic and flesh alike. Such is the fate of Nightborn, who cannot drink of the Nightwell. Yum yum. This is my fate as well. Unless... Yeah. Look out! Irath Onas! Get them off the barrier! Talisra is one of those Nightborn that did not agree with Alessandra, and we can see what happened to her. A whole bunch of the Withered are attacking, and even though she could use her power to hold up a shield, it comes at a great price. So we help her out, we escort her to safety to an area called Shalaran. After patching her up, a cinematic that's not yet implemented is supposed to show how Gul'dan and the Nightborn joined forces. I believe that these cinematics will not be available until launch, but either way, Holding up the shield has drawn a fair bit of Talisha's power as she needs to feed. After collecting some crystallized ancient mana and defeating the ancient keepers, we explore the area and she comes to the conclusion that this would make a perfect place for refuge. There are all teleportation paths, there's leyline energy being fed into the chamber, and she wonders what could have required such power, a weapon perhaps? Regardless, this will be our base of operations, a temporary home until she can return to Suramar, but to do that, we will need to work on a rebellion, gather more forces, and take down Alessandre, the Legion, and all those standing in our way. That is the major storyline for the zone. We need the Eye of Amanfu, a pillar of creation, to seal the rift at the Tomb of Sargeras. And the Eye is in hands of Alessandre, so we team up with these people, we work on our rebellion, and we try to take down Alessandre. Now taking down a whole city is no easy task, so we need allies, and not only Nightfallen. We're also going to obtain Nightborn, that chose not to openly speak out against Alessandre, but they still disagree with her, and even the Withered have their part to play. We're sent out to meet up with Chief Telemancer Okulev. He's the man responsible for the teleportation network around Sudomar, and we're given a token to show him, to make sure that he knows we're on his side. At his home, a traps wait for us, and if you fail to show the token in time, Oculus will show no mercy and he'll send you halfway across the zone to a very unfortunate and early death. If you do toss him the token in time, you get to deliver him to Talisra once his work here is done. He didn't have enough time to collect his instruments before fleeing the palace, and Alessandra's goons are already scouting the place looking for Ocula. That means that we get the pleasure of collecting his instruments, and we get to play around with his teleportation network. You get some beautiful views of the city as you go along, you get to fight a few people, but as we go about, Oculus realizes that someone has been tampering with his teleportation pads, and once we go into his sanctum, we find out that it was Warpcast Twen who's been messing around with his former teacher's network. The two of them duke it out in the sky as we overload the coils and shut down the entire facility. We are victorious, but similar to when Talisra used the power, the battle with Twen has taken a great deal out of Oculus. We have no choice but to literally carry and deliver him back to base, to which we give him some delicious ancient mana to feed upon and buy him another day of sanity. With the Chief Telemancer recovered, we gain access to his teleportation network, and as you travel across the zone, you'll encounter little pylons, which you can then activate by feeding it some ancient mana. Now you might notice a theme here, ancient mana is the currency of the zone. You can loot it from defeated mobs, you can pick them up from crystal clutters scattered across the zone, and later on you can even get buffs and shoulder enchants and all kinds of ways to increase your ancient mana. The Nightfallen need their fix, and I've noticed that after logging back in the next day, they once 
once again required me to give them some mana in order to activate them and get another quest. You can also use the mana to obtain different buffs. For example, I've been able to ride on a Kitty on Crack, which was very fast mount. I've received buffs that had a chance to deal fire damage on hits or give you a minor shield. The ancient mana can be used for many different things and there are many different ways of obtaining it. So after getting the Telemancer, we're sent out to locate an old colleague of Talisra. She was actually on her way to Ambervale when we encountered her since she wanted to meet up with Arcanus Keldenough who's been studying the Withered. For years, he tried to find a way to calm their feral nature or perhaps even cure them. But one day, one of his subjects escaped, ran amok in the royal gardens, and Keldenough was ordered to cease his research and kill all of the Withered. He refused, was exiled from the city, and we're told to go and look for him, but it seems that the Arcanist has become part of his studies, as being exiled from the city turned him into a Withered. His notes are still scattered around, which talk about a new subject, number 16, who who's apparently special. His arcane essence has been touched by some mysterious power and the arcanist named him Terrin. Using Terrin's essence as the base, he's been able to craft a spell to sometimes calm the Withered and on his final journal entry, day 50, after being attacked by Etern and Dima showing up, Keldenov realizes that he's not going to make it. He can no longer protect his research subjects as the hunger for magic takes hold of his mind. He asked of anyone who reads this to pick up his spellstone and use it to carry on his work. After releasing the Arcanist from his terrible fate, we are the ones who loot the spellstone. And subject number 16, Terran, he shows up completely entranced by the stone. We bring him back to base. A life subject could be useful in helping Talisra unravel the research. Now with the stone in hand, we're able to subdue more of the Withered and we add them to our ranks. After feeding subject 16 some delicious ancient mana, Talisra cast a spell to find out what happened to him. What was it that made him so special? Terran is at the mercy of his own mind. Whatever you find in there, it may be difficult to control. And we need your help to sort through the visions, so be ready for anything. With any luck, we will discover what makes Terran special, and whether there's anything left of who he used to be. Help to least that I complete the Arcane Communion with Terran. Be careful who you trust. Let us begin. Come along, Theron. 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 Oh god, it's again the Ufig. The Theron. Narthala Vas Manari. I feel them. His memories. The day he was exiled. Dismiss these memories so we can proceed. Ah, he had to leave his wife and child behind. Ah. This hunger, this fear, I too have felt it. Let us move on. So here we see him slowly devolve. Thala Narvalas. Such confusion. Such rage. I... I am losing control. Well, let us uh, get rid of these memories then. Come here. Come here. I'll fix ya. Come here, final memory. Make them stop! Please make them stop! Oh wow. Voice acting. I ah! I've said it once, I will say it a hundred times. Voice acting makes it so much better. There are a couple of times, a couple of voiceovers that makes me go ah! like ah! Enough Wow. There. You found something, didn't you? Something which gave you peace. A peace we so desperately need for ourselves. Delisera! Are you alright? I... 
I am fine. Talisra does not know what it was that Terran found, but she does know where it is, Moonshade Sanctum to the west. Whatever power allowed Keldenov to create a spell to soothe the Withered, whatever power altered Ferin's arcane essence, its source can be found there and we're sent out to collect it. As we remove the seal which protects the seed, the Felderai attack. Now I haven't been able to find the source behind the Felderai, their origin story, but they seem to be a spider-like creature race, very similar looking to the Nerubian, with a a little bit of Nightborn mixed in there. Now handing over the seed to these spiders, it pisses off Vilwalker Faradin, who's been spending 10,000 years of his life guarding it and he wants us to make it right. The Felderai make their home in the ruins down below, so we team up, we go in, we take care of Queen Orafis and we bring the seed back to our base. Oddly enough, the base has a perfect stand to place it upon, where it can drink from the ley lines down below and it sinks in with a satisfying click. You might wonder to yourself, what is this seed, who is this Veilwalker, and why does the base have a perfect spot to hold the seed? All of them are pretty good questions, and sadly, I haven't been able to find the answers. It's possible that some dialogue was supposed to take place once we put the seed down, but it seems like we're growing some sort of mana tree. Subject 16 calmed down when he found the seed. It's very possible that this is going to be a constant source of mana for those that need it. That's just my interpretation though. For all I know, we are growing another world tree, or perhaps we are growing a weapon. Like I said, I couldn't find a clear answer. Regardless, at this point, we have Exiled Nightborn in our ranks, we have a couple of Withers, we've got Veilwalker Faradin, who hangs around, and we have the seed on display in the base. Now it's time to get some Nightborn that still have influence with the city to our sides, as we're sent to find sympathizers amongst the Sheldorai. Alessandra's decision to welcome the Legion into Sudamar earned her plenty of enemies. We're sent to make contact with a spell fencer by the name of Silgrin, who's loyal to her cause, and he's been lying in wait since their failed coup. Elisra lives? Come, let us talk in private. We should be safe to speak here for a moment. Many Nyborn have pinned their hopes on Talisra disposing the Grand Magistrix. Since she disappeared, dissenting voices have grown silent. We must spread the word discreetly among the populace. Lailef Lunastre will be a perfect ally in this. She is a socialite with many connections and she is no friend of the Legion. Lilith hosts a masquerade party at our estates, where rumors are traded like coin and brandish little daggers. Let us invite ourselves in. Enchanted masks. Simply don the mask, and a magical costume will envelop your body. It should be enough to fool the other guests, but stay clear of the guards. Boy. I will find Lilith. You stay out of trouble. That is... Just enjoy the party for a bit. You know, mingle. With the mask placed on our face, we can infiltrate the party and suggest that perhaps allying with the Legion might not be the best course of action. A few wings here and there seem to do very little to change people's minds, but after a little bit, we get to meet up with Yelef Lunastre, who has no love for the Legion, nor their leader's decisions. Her sister sees things differently and wants nothing to do with their schemes and plans. Not willing to spill her own blood, Lilef asks of us to subdue her sister, bring her over to them, which we do, and afterwards we use some magic to steal her image. This will allow us to walk through the city without being instantly attacked, some of the guards will notice that something's wrong with you, but in general, the people of the city should be fooled. Our mission in all of this, well, I'll let the cinematic explain. The people will rise. Behold, Suramar, our haven, our sanctuary, our prison. Elisan and the Legion seek to bring us to heal, through fear, through hunger. The flame of the Shaldurai flickers. We must reignite it. We must stir the noble hearts of... We must stir the noble hearts of our people. You! must show them that Azeroth has not forsaken them. We are going to help out the Nightborn gain some allies help the rebellion by performing several tasks. Arcwine, the drink that allows the Nightborn to stay sane and filled with magic, has been put on ration to keep the people under control. We're going to help out those most in need, those are devolving, and we're also going to steal some more Arcwine to hand out to the people. Some of the people, children even, they've been taken away, so we're going to sneak in, we liberate them, we escort them safely back home. All in all, we're working on building up an army, we're building up our base, we're getting troops in, and we're getting ready to bring down the regime in Suramar. 
Now I could probably sit here and talk for hours about all the individual little storylines that are going on, but I think that's best saved for when Legion's actually live and we have all the dialogue, all the voice acting, the raid that is going to accompany this storyline, all the little pieces of the puzzle. Like I mentioned at the start, I haven't been able to finish every single storyline, but for those curious, there is going to be a storyline with Raiko and Naga, there is going to be a storyline with a demon hunter and a dwarf that wants to save his buddy, there is going to be a storyline with some night elves creating a new moon well, there is the moon guard, there is a murloc love story, there is a caretaker of the dead that wants to take his own life, there is a druid that does not believe a t-rex should be kept inside a zoo, there's a whole lot going on in the zone and I really enjoyed myself while exploring it. They play around with some different game mechanics that we've seen in the past while also allowing you to hookshot across the city, so all in all, Suramar has been fun and I can't wait to explore more of it and see where the storyline is going to go. Like all zones, the questing is eventually going to send you into the dungeons, with the Arcway, a network of tunnels beneath the city, and the Court of Stars, us crashing a party where rumor has it that Grand Magistrix Alessandra herself may be making an appearance. This will then all lead into the Surama raid itself called the Night Hold, and only time will tell if the Nightborn are going to stay loyal to the Legion or if we can make them see reason and turn this beautiful city to our side. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I hope that you enjoyed the story of Surama so far. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!